أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللئيم الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear listeners, this is your brother Idris Muhammad Madugu and I'm going to do today's podcast with my very student, my best student, Zahra Tifaya Bayensi. Today we are in our studio at the Madrasa to Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. We are live in our library. Today's session is going to be a very important reminder about Yom al Qiyamah, about the Day of Judgment. People celebrate all kinds of days. They talk about the birthdays, they talk about the anniversary day, they talk about the holiday, they talk about the graduation day, all kinds of days. But whoever sat down to think about the judgment day? That is only for the believers. There is a saying attributed to our noble master that remember constantly that which destroys pleasures. What destroys pleasures? Death. Death is the destroyer of pleasures. You see someone sitting down today in a certain chair in the house, and the next time you come over, the chair is empty. Where is the person? He is underground. That alone should put some, should send some shiver down your spine that this life is not permanent and there is a very important journey for us to embark upon. And because of this journey, we constantly have to remember Allah Azza wa Jal and keep the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal so that we are going to have a very good life here on the earth and also enjoy the most pleasant life in the hereafter. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions once in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتِنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى He said, when whoever, whoever turns his face from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, whoever ignores or abandons the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal said he's going to have a difficult life here on earth. He's going to have the most difficult life here on earth, no matter what he has, whether he has money, whether he has cars, whether he has beautiful houses, whether he has all kinds of things you can imagine. But Allah Azza wa Jal said he's going to be the most depressed human being. He's going to battle all kinds of spiritual challenges because he has turned his back against Allah Azza wa Jal. And on the day of Qiyamah, Allah said we are going to resurrect him blind. So he will say, oh my Lord, why is it that I was resurrected blind when in the world I used to be seen? And it will be said to him, that is how my verses, my lessons, my ayat came to you, but you forgot them. So today you will equally be forgotten. So without any further ado, we're going to invite our daughter Zahra to start off with a recitation of Surah Al-Qiyamah. Whilst we do the tafsir of it, inshallah, and so on. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. La uqsimu bi yom al-kiyama. Allah Azza wa Jal says, after A'uz Billah min al-Shaytan wa Jim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, La uqsimu bi yawm al-Qiyamah. Nay, I swear by the day of judgment. I swear by the day of resurrection. It is mentioned in the Sunnah that whatever Allah Azza wa Jal swears with, and he tells you that thing is very important, that thing is very great. That one has a very important, a very significant status in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So this alone tells you that the Yom Al Qiyamah, the day of resurrection, is a serious day. It's not a joke, and everybody is going to encounter it. And because we are going to encounter it, we really need to come back and think about how to prepare before it comes. Wala ukusimu bin nafsin lawama. And nay, I swear by the self reproaching soul to the certainty of resurrection that there are certain souls that are going to reproach themselves, that are going to curse themselves. Why? Because they have rejected the day of Qiyamah. They refuse to believe in the day of judgment. So the time comes. And then he now sees himself in the judgment field and he is filled with fear. Oh, why is it that I didn't prepare for this particular day? And he has nobody to blame but who? Himself or herself. Right. <laughs> 
Al-Najma Izama Al-Najma Izama Najma Najma Izama Ayahsabu Al-Lan Ayahsabu Al-Insan Al-Lan Najma Izama Does man think that we will not assemble his bones? Man, human being, thinks that, oh, when he dies and he becomes, you know, dust. How would it be possible for Allah Azza wa to assemble his bones again? Tell us what happened during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu One man who disbelieved in the resurrection, what did he do? Well, Nabi. Nabi will tell us that. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting down, then he was telling people that on the day of Kiyama, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will resurrect people's bones, even if it's dust. So now the, then one man went to the where the dead bodies are, then he picked dust. He put bones that have been squashed into that. Then he drew it in the prophet's face, hmm. and he said that so, so your God is going to reassemble this dust. Mm -hmm. Then that's all. Hmm. What did the prophet ﷺ tell him? Yes. Um, he said on the day of Kiyama, mm -hmm. Allah is going to resurrect people's bones. Mm -hmm. Even if it's dust. Yes. Even if it's dust. And someone came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he took a son of both the twins in the Prophet face. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him that, yes, Allah Azza wa Jal is going to kill you. You will be buried. Hmm? And you will be resurrected. You will, your bones will be resurrected, and Allah will take you to Jahannam. You go to hell by this behavior. That tells you that that man is destined for condemnation, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Bala kadrina ala anusawiya banana. Allah Zawadal says, Bala, yes. Qadirina, we are able annusawwi ala annusawwi banana to proportion his fingertips. Your very fingertips. Allah Azza wa said he is able to proportion it. Put it into diverse orders. Such that your fingerprint is different from the fingerprint of every human being that was created from the time of Adam up until the day of judgment. It your fingerprint. Your your fingerprint is completely unique. There is nobody that has your type of fingerprint. Look at our numbers on earth. But Allah has the other was able to give us different fingerprints. Everybody has a unique fingerprint. Such that if I should use my fingerprint to open this phone, you would not be able to open it with your fingerprint. If I should use it as a lock and the phone is able to identify it, that's all. Because it's unique. I cannot use this to open it. What did they tell me? Do you see anything? What about this one? Is it opening? Is it opening? No, right? Fingerprint not recognized. What about this one? Not recognized. What about this one? Not recognized. What about this one? It's open. Because it's unique. Not even the other one. This. This does not open it either. It doesn't open it either. So that tells you one of the miracles of the Quran, Allah Azza wa mentioned this so many years ago, that he has proportioned your fingerprint. The reason why they are, they are, they are doubting is that, ah, why is it that at one particular place they will bury one, somebody, and so many thousands, thousand years later, the person will become completely dust. And they will not even know that someone was buried there before, and they will come and bury another person. They will keep burying people upon people. With so many years going by, those people become dust, right? And we'll keep burying people. So, how is it that all these mixed powders they have already mixed up? And look at the number of people who came to live on earth. How will it be possible for Allah Azza wa Jal to resurrect each and every one of them having their own features separate from the other? How? 
You see how they are doubting Allah as well. So Allah as well told them that if Allah was able to give every human being a different fingerprint, <laughs> then how would, be, how would it be difficult for Allah as well to do something even smaller? He, when he was creating, it wasn't difficult for him. You think he's resurrecting that was difficult for him? <laughs> no. Elsewhere in Nazi'at, Allah has to ask, أَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْقًا أَمِ السَّمَاءُ بَنَاهَا Is it you, human beings, that are difficult to create? Or the heavens that we created them one above the other? How, 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 how big are you compared to the heavens? Very tiny. Very tiny. If they are to, to pack all the six heavens and place them into the seventh heaven, it will swallow it like a ring in Sahara on the Sahara Desert. And it's very easy for Allah as well. Then. And you think resurrecting you will be difficult for Allah? Hmm. We have a place to go. And it's possible for Allah. More than possible. So we have to be prepared. بَلْ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ لِيَفْجُرَ أَمَامَهُ بَلْ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ لِيَفْجُرَ But man, nay, prefers to continue in sin. The reason why man will be asking these questions, the reason why people want to be asking these questions and trying to make certain mockery is because, pay attention, is because they want to continue sinning. They don't want to change their ways. They know that if they accept this, then it means what? It means they have to live a righteous life. It means they have to obey the commands of Allah. But because they don't want to obey the command of Allah, they will make excuses. So that is a very bad attitude. When you have a certain bad behavior, and people talk about it, accept it and change it. But if you begin to make excuses, then it means you are like this person over here who would always make an excuse. When he does something wrong and you reproach him, instead of him saying that, oh, may Allah guide me, he would rather now talk about he would rather now bring some excuse and be saying all kinds of things here and there, you know. So that is that is a pro- a big problem. May Allah Azza wa save us from that. Yes, Alu Ayana Yes, Alu Ayana He is asking, when when is this day of judgment that you are talking about? He's asking the Prophet Allah Sallam when. If you say the day of judgment is going to come, when is it so that we can we can go and look at it and see? Hmm? A certain man came and then he was preaching. He was preaching seriously about a grave. When he finished preaching, and then he came out of the mosque. Some men who are sitting there listening to him in the mic, they got angry. Why are you preaching the day of judgment on us? And do you know what they told him? You are welcome. Ah, said, what, what have I traveled to? He said, you are welcome. He said, ah, why are you welcoming me? I'm, I'm, in this, I'm in this area with you all the time. Why are you welcoming me? And he said, we, you are welcome from the day of judgment. You have already gone to the day of judgment in the grave and you have seen it already. And you have come. So that's why we are welcoming you. Just to make a fun, just to make fun of him, right? Just to make a mockery of him. Because they don't believe it. And these are supposed to be Muslims who pray. You pray and you don't believe in this. Oh. Allah have mercy. Faiza barikal basur. When vision is dazzled, Allah is going to give some of the signs of the day of judgment. On that, on that day, the vision will be dazzled. The vision will be blurred. Because things will be going all around. You are going to be seeing storms, all kinds of storms. The mountains will be crashed into powder, and the powder is going to be sprinkled on the whole world. Ice will be filled with dust. Mountains will be collapsing. Heavy, heavy railways that they have come to. And then these kind of overheads. It will just collapse with people. <laughs> Houses be crap crashing. You see cars flying in the air because of how heavy the wind is. Carry for car. Boom. Well, why are you going to stand? Somebody's house that he has spent so much money in building to just fall down. So you see, 
the world is not permanent. What is permanent? Jannah. And Jannah is worth dying for. That is why the Sahaba, they want to die because they want to go to Jannah. They want to die for Jannah. Because they know the world is not worth dying for. This world is temporary. It doesn't last forever. It's just some short period of years that you're going to spend. And out of that short period of years, my majority of it is suffering. Right from infancy, you don't even know enjoyment. When you become a child, the time that you want to start enjoying, they say school, they say madrasa, they say rules and regulations. So your life is restricted. Restricted, you have to be learning. Right? Now that you grow up, you are now into an adult, and you want to start life, they say work. You have to go to work. Start working, working, working. You leave your house early. You come late. You begin to pay bills. You pay this, you make children. You pay their fees, you pay this. Look, no peace of mind. Then, when you are heading towards old age, the sicknesses begin to come. You begin to get weak. Your hair become gray. Your beard become gray. You begin to now look for a, a stick to be walking with. You need a third, third leg. Then sicknesses begin to set in. They say you have this, they say you have this thickness, they say don't don't eat this, don't eat that. That is how you go around. Then one day you just sleep and people will knock on the bang 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 bang. Wake up, wake up, Rabbi. Daddy doesn't wake up. And then he's not there. They just open, they just go and bring some capital, will break the door, and they'll see him lying down. Gone. Gone forever. How short our life is. So why should you waste it thinking that you can catch the world? This world is like shadow. If you chase your shadow, you can never catch it. You'll be chasing that. It'll just be still remain in front of you. But if you turn your back and you are going, it has no option but to what? Follow you. <laughs> if you turn your back and you are going, your shadow will follow you. It has no option. That's how the world is. If you turn your back from the world and you follow Allah, it's all them. the world will follow you. Allah will bring the world to you. But if they want to change the world, you will not catch the world and you will lose the battle. So, you have to strike a fine balance. Whatever you are doing, never let it sway you away from the path of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Hmm? Never. Never. Anything you are going to do, ask, is it okay by Allah? If it's not okay, well, why change it? If it is okay, Alhamdulillah. Allah said it from us. Wa khasaf al kamar. Wa khasaf al kamar. Allah said, and the moon will darken. The moon that used to bright, it will not become dark. It will eclipse. Boom. As if they have taken out the light. That is reflecting through the moon. They have taken it off. Let's see the moon like that. No light again. You see darkness. Darkness is deep, as if you can catch it with your hand. Where are you going to pass? Hmm. All right. And the sun and the moon will be brought together. Allah will grab the sun, grab the moon, put them together and keep them somewhere. Keep them somewhere. Alright. Yakula insan yawma izin aina al-mafar. Man will say on that day, where is the place of escape? Let me begin to say, where can I run to? I want to run and go and hide somewhere. Where can I run to? There is no way you can run to. No place to, rest, to, to, to hide, right? You look for a place to hide because you've seen trouble, you've seen danger. When you begin to see danger, what, what is the first thing you think of? Running. Yes. And when you begin to run, what do you, what, what do you think of whilst you are running? Hiding somewhere. Hiding somewhere. But now there is no place of hiding. Yes. Just like when the angel of death lands in the house. You are just sitting down one day and the angel of death says, it is your turn, it is your turn. And you are just sitting and then the angel of death will land in the house. <laughs> Trying to clamp on you. You might be sitting in this library and then you see him there. You open this door. Bam! Run away! 
and time to the room. Immediately you get into the room, you see him standing there waiting for you. Mm-hmm. You come. You turn your back with full speed, you run to the kitchen, you see him standing at the door of the kitchen waiting for you. Aina mata kum. You drip kumul mautu, wana kuntum fi buruji mushayada. That's what the Quran said. Aina mata kum, wherever you are, you drip kumul maut, death will find you. Wala kuntum fi buruji mushayada, even if you are in a fortified fortress. Even if you are in a fortified fortress, if you are living in a place where the walls are very strong and tall, covered you, protected you, death will come and take you. Aina ma takunu, you drip kumul mautu, wala kuntum fi burujim mushayyada. That alone should put some shiva down your spine and tell you that this world is useless. Go back to Allah. The religion will be interesting. You will enjoy the religion of Islam when you have knowledge of Islam. And you will have knowledge of Islam when you learn Islam. Learn books like this. You have to read them deeply, understand them, read them. That is why you should be spending, not tablets. So I was very happy when this boy's tablet was seized, and this boy too. So it's good for you. I don't even use it. Yes, it's good. We don't need it this age. You don't even need it. We have to take it away from you and give you books. Right? The television is perhaps enough. Once once a while. Once a while, not every day. Don't make watching television your habit. Once in a while, you go and sit down there and watch some good Islamic movies. That is going to increase your knowledge and faith. That's enough. Don't go and carry a tablet and then you spend all the day from morning to evening to the extent that when Mickey is even going to urinate, <laughs> he cannot put the tablet down. He has to hold the tablet and go to the urinal and go and pass water whilst he's still holding the tablet. <laughs> and then he will finish and come up holding the tablet. So this, this is madness. Do you know that? This, this is obsession. They call it obsession. He has become obsessed with it. So it is. It, is, it has a psychological effect on him. A <laughs> time comes when, if he grows up, he cannot find happiness in other things. He can only find happiness in these mm-hmm. material things. You should be trained to look for happiness in salat. Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> he will tell Bilal when it is getting time to salat. He will tell Bilal that Arihna bi salat. Come and cheer us up with salat. Come and make us happy with salat. Then Bilal will get perform ablution, climb the minarets, and call the other. Uh-huh. And that is what makes them happy. Whenever they enter into the salat, they feel happy. They said the condition of a believer in salat is like the condition of a fish in river. When a believer enters into salat. The kind of joy, happiness, satisfaction, the peace of mind, the soothing that he receives in Salah is like how a fish feels when it is placed back into the river. And they said the condition of a hypocrite, <laughs> Munafiq, in Salah is like the condition of a fish that has been removed from water. When you take the fish out of the river like this, but the fish will begin to feel very bad, very, very bad, because it is not meant, this, this is not made for it, you know, it, 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 its nature it reprehends this, kind of, it's against this particular condition. So that is how the, the hypocrites feel. When you put the hypocrite into salat, it's like you're taking a fish out of the fish. It will be in a hurry to, to go back. So the hypocrite, when he enters into salat, he's in a hurry to come out of the salat because it doesn't make him happy. But a believer, when he enters into the salah, he doesn't even feel like stopping. So you can even detect the, the salah of the believer and the salah of the, the hypocrite by the amount of time they spend in the salah. When he tells somebody performs salah, I guess ablution, use two seconds to finish ablution. How could this be possible? When he says perform salah, use one minute to finish all the salah. Someone will go to his website, he will not pray. Uh, Zohor, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, then he will come home. Zohor, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, then he will come home. And when he comes home, now, the, now, now is the time to come and perform all the prayers. 
So you use two minutes to finish Surah Asr, Maghrib, and Isha. <laughs> Tariq Salat. <laughs> he's living his Salat, right? Because he's chasing after material things. Oh my God. Look for a way to fix your religion into anything you are doing. Wherever you are, look for a way to fix in your ibadah, your act of worship. Because Allah said, In the Salata, كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْتِيْتًا وَقُوتًا Allah said the Salah is to the believers on a prescribed time. Allah has prescribed certain times where you should perform the Salah. Allah said, I have, have an appointment with me five times a day. The first appointment will be you should interrupt your sleep. Get up at the, at the, early, the early, early stages of the day. Don't get up and come and have an appointment with me. I'm waiting for you. Yes. And then in the afternoon at 12 noon, come, let's have another appointment. Late afternoon, Asso, come, let's have another appointment. In the evening, sunset, come again, let's have another appointment. And then finally, finally, in the night, Aisha. When everything is set, when everything settles, when you finish eating, you finish whatever you are doing, and you are relaxing, come let's have another appointment for me to relax your spirit for you. Then you can take it to bed. Oh my God, where else could you get this from? That's good. For Margaret and Isha. At your age, you should be able to lead Salah. But it takes seriousness. If you don't pray regularly, can you be leading people in Salah? Hmm? If we will come and sit down and learn Atahiyah to Allah, we will come and learn Salawat to Allah Nabi, we will come and learn Allah Ma Inni Aus Bikamin Adab Al Khabar, I mean Fitnat Al Mahiyah Al Mahdum Shad Fitnat Al Masjid Dajjal. And you know, Master, how can you lead Salah? If you don't know how to read the Tashahud, if you don't know how to read the Sujood, the Ruku, how do you lead Salah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because he knows you can't. You don't master certain things. You have to master them. You have to learn. Because before I said you should go like this, he rather be saying be friendly for this. And you see, so the question arises to you. I am challenging you. What have you done about that? I've taught him several times, but he keeps on making the mistake. And so you have to teach him well. You have to teach him what well. How many times do you pray? How many rakat for Zuhu? Four. That's it. We just taught him how many. Uh-huh. So, so that's your role. That, that's your duty. Do you deserve any praises for, for observing your own duties? No. So what are you talking about? You have to do it. Hmm. Why have we taught you? You think we taught it for you to we keep, just keep it? Other people. Yes. Alain. Mari for the name. Mari for the name. Al-amal ubihi. You practice what you learn. Asalisa. Adawa. You invite people to it. So are you inviting him to what you have learned? Yes. That's okay. So you see, it's good. Some some people will not do that. What do they do? They wait until when they come home, they will come and discharge all of it. But he said no. Just like all of us, we do that, right? So in the office, you come and you see some mats. We even made a prayer spot in our office so that when it is time for salat, those of us who are around, we all get up, we would have a we pray then come back. So it doesn't interrupt anything. Enough of the needless questions. Let's continue. Kalla la wazir. Kalla. Allah said, nee. Lo, behold, la wazir. There is no refuge. You want to run and hide? Run. Let's see. Let's see where you can go. Allah on the day of judgment will ask, Ya mahshar al-jinni wal-insi in istata'atum an tanfudu mina qatari samawati wal-ardi fanfudu la tanfuduna illa bi sultan fa bi ayyi alai rabbikuma tukathiban Allah said, Oh, you assemble of jinn and men, human beings. In if you can run and enter into the heavens or the earth to hide, then do it, let us see. Do it, let us see. Nobody can escape from that field except with a reason, genuine reason. Unless Allah says, now you can move. 
an inch to either Jannah or the other side before you can go. Do you want to go to Jannah? Yes. Yes. Is it just by saying you want to go to Jannah? No, it's by worshiping Allah. And by your actions. Yes. Mm-hmm. Your, your actions, your deeds. That's why when you are placed in front of the grave, the grave will tell you and that. Yes, the grave will tell you that. Look into me. Look inside. What did you, did you see? Anything? Just clean soil. Uh-huh. Very clean. There is nothing here. But if your people should bury you into me, and you should see something inside of happiness, joy, or of the otherwise, yet yeah, right, or of the otherwise, or of punishment, scorpions, venoms, poisonous, you know, biters. If you should see anything like that, or any jahannama, you brought it here with your own deeds. Is the result of your deeds. They are the result of what? Your actions. So you have to fear Allah Azza wa Jal. You have to love Allah. Allah loves you. That is why He made you Muslim. That is why He gave you Islam. Someone somewhere right now does not even know that when you wake up in the morning, the first thing to do is fajr. Someone doesn't know that. So someone will just wake up in the morning, they just go to the washroom, brush, take shower, goes to work, that's it. He has no any appointment with Allah as well. He hasn't, he hasn't. But you, Allah said no, he has chosen in his own wisdom to guide you and give you Islam. He gave you Islam. He gave you the ability to, 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 to connect with him. So why should you keep playing with this, with this gift? Is that how you treat your gift? Assuming you have a gold. Maybe you have some golden watch. That is very expensive. It's the most expensive thing you have. Can we come to the house and come and see the, the, the golden watch lying on the floor there? Mm-hmm. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Can we come to the house and then we come and see it just lying down on your... Why they we will clean our feet before we enter? No. no. At least there, no. you don't like it. So why would we see it? Like at a very special place, yes. like in a glass like cover or something. Like in a huge case that everybody can see it. And oh. it's in this little glass thing that's protecting oh, it. Oh, it's a, oh, a drawer. Drawer? Yes, that's even the most sensible answer she has given us. <laughs> right? She think it. I like that. You know what? Draw her. So you you, you you drag it like this. Put it into the drawer and do what? Put the key and what? Lock it. Lock it. You will lock it. You will lock it in the drawer. So that nobody will what? Take it. Okay. Why? Why would you do that? Oh, a genie will take it. No. Ah. Uh, or so when somebody, somebody breaks in. into your house, they can come and be looking for anything, gold and money. So Something that's why you expensive. do that. Expensive. Go and come. So that's why you put it in a drawer. You lock it up because you don't want anybody. So you just keep it there once a while. Then you will wear it. Then you come on, oh, I'm dying. <laughs> You're walking happily. You want people to see your hand. Ila Rabbike yawma izin al-mustakar. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Kalla la wazar." No, there is no refuge. There is no way you can run and hide. Ila Rabbika yawma izin al-mustakar. To your Lord, Allah Azza wa Jalla, that day is the place of permanence. The only place you can run to is who? Allah Azza wa Jalla. So if you are a person who ran away from Allah when you are in the world, you are running away from Allah, and on the day of judgment you have to run to Allah, do you think you find a, you find peace? No. But if you are a person who you are running to Allah in the world, you are running to Allah, and on the day of judgment you have to run back to Allah again, do you have any problem? No. Because that's where you are already. That's your place already. So you are not a hypocrite. Who ran away from Allah? One day of the man, he wants to go to Allah and look for refuge. There is no refuge, but you didn't keep any refuge, but you don't have any good relationship there. 
like a student who during the vacation he thought that's the end of the school he thought they would not go to school so he insulted the teacher he insulted all the teachers because he thought that we are going for vacation so and then he was just in the home enjoying his vacation and then one day he received the news that tomorrow school will resume and when they sat down like he said I thought that's the end of school though. so I've insulted all the teachers now how am I going to go back to them again it became a talk it was troubling his mind so if you are in this world and you didn't run to Allah you are running away from Allah and on the day of judgment wait a minute, on the day of judgment you are now running to Allah you are not going to find peace there because you didn't keep any peace you didn't keep any good relationship there you didn't keep any good relationship there so you have to have a good relationship with Allah whilst you are on earth here so that on the day of judgment you are going to benefit from that good relationship Alright, let's go. Yunabba al insanu yawma izim bima qad bima qaddama wa akhar Man will be informed that day of what he sent ahead and kept back. On that day you are going to be informed of whatever you, d- you, you, you did. Anything you did on earth, you are going to be informed on that day. The good deeds and the bad deeds you have sent, and the good deeds and the bad deeds you should have done, and you left them behind, you are going to be shown. They will show you the number of years you have been given on earth, and what you should have done with it. And then they will do that against what you have actually done. Then you are going to be rewarded accordingly. Not a minute when you eat it. Not the minute. Nobody should be fighting the, the, the seed. Otherwise, it's not not a minute. It will die. Never. Throw these things away. Be serious. Let's go. Okay. Basiro. Basiro. بل الإنسان على نفسه بصيرة. He doesn't end without with throwing the Tau Marabout away. Tau Marabout when it is ending, it becomes Tau Marabout Sakina. Sounds like Tau Marabout Sakina. I already Sakina. know. You don't know. Why are you saying it's ending? What, which of the rules are you quoting? Which of the principles did you just quote? That principle does not exist. Hmm? So man will be in. So Allah says, rather man against himself will be a witness. You are going to bear witness against your own self. Because whatever you did will be given to you in the form of a book. And they will tell you, Iqra kitabaka kafa binafsika liyawma alayka hasiba. Read your own book that you have created for your own self. This is your record. And anything in your record, it is what you have done. So read your own record that you have, you know, written for your own self. Aliyawma alayka hasiba. Today, the judgment is on you yourself. You are going to judge yourself. Anybody who is guided, which means anybody who opens his book of record, his record, and then he's flip, flipping the pages and he's seeing shining colors, flying colors, golden colors. Allah has said this for his own good, it's for your own self. And anybody who is lost, who opinion and he's seen all kinds of evil actions, destroying his bad deeds, doing all kinds of shenanigans on earth, forgetting about Allah, he doesn't pray, he doesn't perform salah, he doesn't perform salawat, he doesn't read the Quran, he is always busy chasing after the world. He's always attending one program after another. He never has time to perform his ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jal. That person for in the He is he's this his loss. Is to his own soul. This is to, to his own destruction. No bearer of burdens will bear the burdens of her. Nobody will carry your sins on that day. Allah said, We are not going to punish, except we have sent you a warner, a messenger. 
If a messenger is sent to you, if the message of Islam has come to you and it is clear to you and you rejected it, then you are the one that will be punished. But if it has not come to you, you have never heard about Islam, you have never heard about the Prophet, you have never received the message of Islam, and it's not your fault. It's not your fault. So you will be handled on that day in a different way than somebody who received the message and he rejected it. Do you understand? So you have to be careful. We have received the message. All of us sitting here have received the message. Mm -hmm. so we have received the message. All right. And he said, even if he presents his excuses, on that day, many people will give an excuse. Some people will give different flimsy excuses. Some will even say that, yeah, Allah, it's because you have misguided me. <laughs> that is why I, I, I didn't worship you. Then Allah is going to say, they have no knowledge of what they are saying. They are trying to claim knowledge of the unseen. A knowledge that has been kept hidden from all of us. The knowledge about who is going to Jannah and who is going to Jahannam and who is a Shaqiyun and who is a Sa'id, who is fortunate and who is wretched. That knowledge, Allah didn't open it for anybody. Allah kept that knowledge to himself. And Allah asked the one said, he is not going to cheat anybody. Hmm? So you cannot use your human logic to say, oh, it is because Allah has misled me that I didn't worship him. Somebody was there drinking wine and they asked him that. Why are you drinking wine? He said, because, mm -hmm. because that is what Allah has written for me. Is he a Muslim or a Christian? Ah, if he's a Muslim, if he's a Christian, will he be saying Allah has written something for him? No. So he's trying to use that as an excuse. And when we are going to lash him for drinking wine, we are going to lash him. I wonder what he said. He said, that's what Allah has destined for me. He said, hey, we too, Allah has destined that we should lash you. <laughs> so they gave it to him. Right? Will you go and stand on the street for a guy to come and hit you and say, this is what Allah has written for me? Ah. Have you ever thought of climbing a 12 story building and jumping in the name of, <laughs> let me jump and see if Allah has destined that I will die, I will die. If he said I will not die, I will not die. Will you ever do that? No. So it means you are, you are just being selective. You are choosing what to believe in and what not to believe in. You are just being heedless. You are being negligent. So that thing does not exist. That oh, as for me, the Allah have written that I go to Jahannam. So me, I don't, I don't care. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> you care when the time for caring comes. Sit down. You care. The Allah has not have mercy on us. So instead of sitting down and thinking foolishly, think about looking for the mercy of Allah. Look out, seek the mercy of Allah. Through your actions and through your prayers, then Allah has the is going to be merciful towards you and grant you his maturity and grant you general. Alright. Um Alright, let's go. La Alright, right, so this is where Allah Azza wa Dali is cautioning the Prophet Muhammad not to hasten his son. In order to to, to, to to read the Quran. At the time he was reading the Quran, he was in a hurry because of the enjoyment that he is deriving from the Quran. He's deriving so much joy from reading the Quran. So now he's in a hurry to learn it from Jibril alayhi salatu wa salam. So when Jibril is reading, he wants to go, you know, he, he wants to you know surpass Jibril. He wants to pass Jibril in the reading. So instead of listening attentively and grasping it, he's enjoying the thing, so he's in a hurry. Right? He's in a hurry, he's in a rush. Because he doesn't want to miss anything. He doesn't want to miss a word. So when Jibril is reading and the verse is a little longer, then he's trying to catch up with Jibril. That is human nature, right? And Allah asks the other soldier, oh, don't worry yourself, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Don't worry yourself. Do not stare your tongue. Do not move your tongue hurriedly. To hasten with the recitation. No, no, don't be in a hurry. Why? Why did Allah tell well him that? The next ayah tells us that. Inna alayna jam'ahu wa qur'ana. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "It is upon us. We have taken. We, Allah Azza wa Jalla, have taken up it upon ourselves as a responsibility. Jam'ahu to to gather the Quran for you." 
Allah has said, we are going to bring them in bits and pieces. And we will organize it in your mind. We will organize it in your heart. Such that there will not be any breakage of the link. They will be carefully weaving for you. Allah, it is Allah's responsibility. Wa Qur'ana, and we are going to make easy the recitation for you. Allah said, I will organize everything in your head without you struggling at all. And I'm going to make the recitation also very easy for you. Just like Allah has said in A'la, that Sanukuriuka fala tansa. Sanukuriuka fala tansa. Allah said, We are going to teach you the recitation and you will never forget it. You cannot forget what Allah has taught you. So don't worry, don't be in a hurry, okay? Relax. I'm going to make it easy for you. This is like a good news to us. That when you are learning the Quran, don't be in a hurry. Some people just want to complete the Quran. Then they will complete the Quran in the form of Zuku completion. <laughs> Zuku completion is when the person finishes the Quran, but every now and then he's making silly mistakes. Every time you open the Quran, so the Quran does not need hurry. When you want to learn the Quran, you need focus. You need to pay attention. You need to open your heart. You need to pray. You need to be patient. Somebody will say, oh, ah, I've gotten the energy, I want to learn the Quran. Patience he will come. is the key. And then he's telling the Quran, there's slight difficulty, you know, he run away. <laughs> no, don't run away. Stop there. Even if it is three surahs you've been able to learn properly, it's okay. It's not compulsory for you to complete it in, in just few days. No. That's why you have many years. Learn it. And you are fortunate. You've had the opportunity to learn it from childhood. Childhood is a stage where you don't have any responsibilities. Have you ever waking up and you are thinking about feeding somebody? Ah, my brother is beating me. Have you ever get, get waking up from bed and you thought about paying somebody school fees? <laughs> Have you ever thought about paying water bills, light bills? <laughs> Do you think about feeding fee? Have you ever getting up and you think about paying somebody's health, you know, bills here? That princess is sick and you are thinking about taking her to the hospital and paying her. No. <laughs> I, I've never thought about that. No. It never even crossed your mind. So at your stage, you don't have any responsibility. The only responsibility you have is to eat and sleep. And use your time. And learn. So Allah Azza wa gave you this opportunity. So that one day you will grow up. Or you shouldn't think you will remain like this. You will grow up. When you, if you fail to use this time properly, this time that you are free, if you fail to use it properly and you grow up, you will curse yourself. You will blame yourself. It will pain you that you didn't make good use of that time. For what? So why would you curse yourself? You will curse yourself because you have lived a stupid life. Mm-hmm. You had the chance, you had the time, you are free. Somebody is there to take care of you, to buy you books, to give you a library, to put an air condition and everything. But you still did not learn and you grow up. You grow up and you are the same as that person who didn't have all of these things. You grow up and you, you have the same result with that person. <laughs> Imagine. Will it be fair on your side to grow up and have the same result? Or a poorer result with someone who doesn't have the kind of life you are having? No. No, it would be very painful. Somebody is in some village somewhere. In some village. When he gets up in the morning, they have to go to the farm. Hmm? From morning after Fajr, right after Fajr prayers, they have to rush to the farm. They are now going to be weeding, 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 weeding. And the weather is cold. Sometimes they don't even have slippers to wear. So they walk to the farm barefooted. Or dresses. Yes. So they go there and the weather is chilled, but they still have to go anyway. There are some dew, drops of rain, you know, the, the, the early morning dew on the leaves. And then it's very cold. You see, their body is white. They don't even have pomade. They don't even have good water to drink. <laughs> Sometimes they drink from some streams that animals and cows and everything go and drink from. That's where they drink from. But they still learn the Quran. And they're able to recite the Quran perfectly. And you had it all. You had all of this comfort and everything. But you did not learn the Quran. And that person is better than you in the Quran. How useless has your, has your life become? You are so useless. Very useless. Very what? Useless. Useless. Because you are living in a city that you can get a Quran. Everything. A proper Quran. But they, they, they get wooden. Like. Wooden. <laughs> but they are able to learn. And they are better than you in the recitation. How useless has your life become? So useless. Yes. So you have to sit up and do the right thing. Otherwise, hmm. And be kind to people. 
Of course, you have to learn. You have to what? Learn. Yeah. Let me show you a certain video. One boy, very young boy. And if you see the recitation, you are you are going to be surprised. Like he recites eloquently. Look at this boy. I know that boy. Now just look at the tone. I just want you to pay attention to the tone. Because he has control over the recitation. Look at how he's able to recite it. He is following a certain chorus. Looks like months of He is following a certain what? Chorus. Yes. And it gives you some feel. Hmm. Is it how you recite Quran? You are taught the same way, but you don't recite it that way because you just in a hurry. Just an example. A young boy, very young. But look at the recitation. It's so inspiring. So what? Inspiring to the extent that they have to take him to a radio station to go and do a recitation for the for the one to preach. A man is going to preach, and he he needs someone to be reading Quran for him. Whenever there is a certain ayah to quote, this boy is the Quran. Literally, the boy is not the Quran for him. Hmm? Okay. Is that what you are doing? And you think you can get it easily like that? No. You have to put in the effort. You have to revise. Reading Quran is, is part of their lives. So it has become so easy for them. I want to show you another boy. Let me guess. This time he's in the village. First agent. About his children. The way they are even taking the ayah by ayah and the type of terror they are doing, it tells you that the possibility is there. Mm -hmm. It's completely possible for you, but you are getting lazy and lazy and you don't revise, you don't do proper revision. Yeah.